Hi there. Welcome to the RSTNE Roundtable podcast, a discussion that focuses in the gold standard of the Word of Yahuwah. Here are your three hosts, Sholiak Moshe, Leader Yoshiahu, and Leader Mordecai. Boker Tov, Boker Tov, my peeps are here. Shalom, yo. Leader Mordechai, Leader Yoshiahu, Moshe Yosef Kalachowski, my peeps are in the house. The lighting is on, everything, we're ready to go. Welcome to the RSTNE round table. You guys still have the round table or did you sell it? <laughs> we got it still. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Anyway, we, we're just kidding, but we're so happy to be back with you for a brand new episode of the RSTNE uh, podcast. And there's so much exciting stuff. Uh, well, to be honest with you, it's weary, you know, wearying of the soul. And, you know, Galatians says that uh, be not be weary and well doing for in due season. We will we'll reap if we faint not. But I'll be honest with you, man. I'm ready to go to sleep and take a rest. But the problem with that is I have severe cervical um, um, nerve pinching in my whole spine, as they say in Portuguese, the columna, the column is pinched, so I can't sleep more than four hours. So that's not a solution. So I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. But at least being with you guys here at the RSTNE roundtable keeps me engaged. So... I'm tired, but I got a funny feeling five or ten minutes into today's roundtable, I should be juiced up. So there's so many things happening here, and, and I just want to just touch briefly, and then you, I'll let you guys just, just share. I'll sit back and go to sleep um, if I can, but remember, I have a four-hour limit, right? So um, let, let me just show you what's happening. I think some of you know. In RST and E world, man, it's amazing the stuff that's happening. In just the last week, and you guys can opine on this. Um, just the last week, we have added two uh, versions. Right here, we've added the Living Vine, and we've labeled that level three. The Living Vine, we are releasing it this week. As more Aramaic, it has the words transliterated more biblically, okay, and uh, things like terms like Yisrael uh, are, have been upgraded to Yisrael. We've eliminated the unbiblical rabbinical E sound and put in the A sound, and it's more Aramaic based, and basically, it's the most degreeked, not greased, but degreek text that we've ever had. So this is, we're so excited. This is for the advanced person who wants to see how the actual pronunciations are with all the latest updates, including the Aramaic. So this is for the more advanced. Now we're labeling all our products level three. Everything else that you guys are used to, you know, the soft cover, the hard cover, color, black and, black and white, that's all level two. Okay, so everything we have is 80% of what we have is level two. That would include the uh, hard covers and soft covers, like this one right here. Okay, and what we're working on as we speak, which is part of why I'm tired and I hope to make Yoshi more, even more tired in, a, in about a half an hour to send him the, the final file because, man, it's a lot of work for you guys. Be the advisory board and the scholars to, to keep this fresh and to keep it exciting. I mean, it's a lot of work. So we're, we're putting the finishing touches on this, and this may be the one that I like the least. Now, I love all of them because I love the Hebrew, and I love learning Hebrew, and I love teaching Hebrew to people who use the RST. But we've been getting quite a few people. I don't, know, I don't know if you guys would call them complaints or 
suggestions, but you know, it sounds the same to me because when you work hard um, and somebody is suggesting strongly, <laughs> it, it, it kind of comes across as a complaint. Um, regardless, people have been saying, you know, I, 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 I can't deal with the Hebrew. It's very choppy. I've got to stop every 10 seconds and go to the glossary. Now, of course, I tell them what I've been telling them for over 20 years. Well, just print the glossary or have it next to you, and you'll learn Hebrew as, as you're studying his, his Kadosh word. You'll be learning Hebrew. But a lot of people coming out of the church, they don't sign up for that. They just want the true names. They All they know about the Nazarene Israelite faith is Shabbat, and um, shalom, or Shabbat shalom. So they not. This is more than they bargained for. So we're coming out with the. It's already going to be out. Let's 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 consider it done. The simple English edition. That's what it's called. The RST. They're all eighth edition. They're, everything we offer now is eighth edition, fully updated to the max. But this is the simple English. And amazingly, we're getting orders on this. And we, we barely put it out. We're already getting orders. People are saying, and now they're coming out of the woodwork. They're saying, we've been waiting for you to get rid of the Hebrew. And I'm like, why? Don't you, aren't you guys Hebrews? Don't you guys want to learn Hebrew, the languages of our forefathers, the original language of Don Aden, the Garden of Eden? You want, you're all excited and happy. He says, yes, because we want something we can study and focus on without going back to the glossary. So I don't know, you know, what the market's going to demand, but I know this. It's very possible that the one I prefer, they're all light years ahead of any other stuff that's out there. We all know that, okay? It's, it is the golden standard. But it's the one that I prefer the least. The one I would prefer the most would be the vine, the, the new living vine version, because... It's got Aramaic words. It's got the transliteration with the ah. It's got all the Elohim out because Yahuwah Elohim is an Elohim, but so are Baal and Dagon and Chemosh. These are other Elohim. And why would we want to use a title where Yahuwah is competing with the other Elohim, where if we stick with the Aramaic, it's Eloha, and there's only one Eloha because all the fallen angels are called Elohim. All the fallen, the, you know, the, 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 the human leaders are the ones that the word comes to. They are the Elohim. Whereas ours, Aloha, and then in the Aramaic, it says Marya. So we don't have to, unlike the Hebrew with the Mesoretic removals, we don't have to put the word Yahuwah in there. Because when we're working with the Mesoretic text, we literally have to change the text. We have to take out the lies of Lord God and, and all that stuff. And we have to insert Yahuwah. The beautiful part about the living vine version coming from the Aramaic, we don't have to put in Yahuwah. From Genesis to Revelation, it says Mar Yah, which literally means the, the master Yah. We don't have to insert anything. So my preference as, a, as someone who's advanced would be the living vine version. For the average person, Level two is your best bet. We don't want to start out in nursery school necessarily, so level two. So we've we've labeled everything, so it's nice and easy. And um, Yoshiahu has helped me make this chart here, which helps on the top so that you'll know what level you're on, level one, level two, level three. So that's where we are. Let's start our discussion there. So um, what say you guys? I mean, how does this... How does this uh, moving on to, you know, more of a variety? How do you think it's going to help? How do you think it's going to affect? Uh, you think it might, it might give people more choices. It might confuse them. You know, I don't think you'd think that, or you wouldn't be here. But, but give me your thoughts. I know Yoshi's worked a little bit on it, so he knows a little bit more about it. I'm going to start with Mordechai, because uh, you're a busy guy and you take time from your schedule. And Yoshi kind of works with me on the manuscript, so he kind of knows a little bit. So what do you think, Mordechai? Talk to me. Well, as far as, uh, shalom, everyone. As far as people getting confused, I don't think so. Because, I mean, you have been doing uh, the restoration scripture since, what, 2005, 2004, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and, people, and everybody has been following it. I follow it, and I 
I understand that it is, I mean, it's, it's an endless job <laughs> to find all the exact, I mean, what was written back then to be in context, you know, it's, so it, it takes time, you know? So as much as you come up with, people still gonna get it. I mean, I would. Right. So, but if let's say, let's assume you were looking for the best translation, which of the which of the choices do you think you would make uh, where you are now, as opposed to maybe if you were a new believer? Me, definitely the latest, <laughs> the latest that you do because I know you continually research. So, but there are there are several. There's the the Living Vine which is what I explained. And then there's the simple English. So those are the new okay. ones. And then there's the standard. So let's assume you just came out of the church. Okay. okay. What would be best for most people, and they're new to Torah, new to Shabbat, would be the simple version. That would be the best for them. For most of the, most folks, 80, 90% would be the standard. The, any That's basically anything. That's the ones you're used to. Well, I, I like this one. This is the one I have that I use Standard. all the time. Yep. Right. That's, that's the one I use all the time, but I use the other ones too. But I, me personally, myself, I, I will give them both, I, you know, because I, I want to read, compare, and I want to see the new findings, you know? Yeah. Well, you've been, you've been a proponent of the rst &E from the first day, and you've been very excited about it, and you've been sharing it nonstop. I mean, basically for 20 years, and no one's had to pay you. No one's had to, to, to push you. You just felt in your ruach that this was the translation that not only changed your life, but can change people's lives. Yeah, they, they need to know. They need to know the truth, you know? Yeah. yeah. And you've been publishing it for 20 years independently before you were part of the rst &E round roundtable. And, and so Yahweh yeah, put it on your heart. This was a, a mighty work of his ruach. Yeah. And a mighty work of his ruah can wear you out. You know, this is very tiring. And we'll talk a little bit about that later, about scribes. So if I forget and we're like short on time, just guys remind me about scribes, okay? Because I want to talk about scribes. It was a little bit of a follow-up from what we talked about last week. Okay? Anything else, Mordecai, on the uh, selections or what, what people should be looking for? No, I something to say on another topic, but I'll wait until you go to that topic. Because okay, or you can bring it up if I forget. Well, Absolutely. By the way, you're getting a little clicking on your microphone, so I don't know if it's because you're moving around or something. So, Yoshi, you've been helping me with the two latest, the Living Vine and the Simple English that we're releasing now, which is more work for a small staff. I mean, let's be honest. We're a very small staff. We're all volunteers. You know, I live off the generous tithes and offerings of the people. Uh, so there were some days, some days I have off. Uh, I take a I watch some sports just to unwind. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. So just to unwind. But there are other days when, you know, I'm working 15, 16 hours, like, kind of, kind of like Mordecai. <laughs> and the problem is <laughs> I'm sitting at a desk and I don't have to tell you. If whether you have, even if you have no arthritis or soreness or stiffness, for a young, healthy person, uh, they will get sore and they need to get away from the computer. Um, yep. <clears throat> there have been days when I, working on, on the Restoration Scriptures True Name Editions for you guys, where, I, God forbid, I hope I'm wrong, but I literally can't see. I mean, I live, my eyes are so tired, they close by themselves, and I literally can't see. So it's a labor of love, and I, I I assume he'll reward me in his kingdom, but not in this life, because if it's in this life, it would be with a new body. We want to welcome everybody again. I'm sorry if we just rushed in today. We want to welcome you, new listeners, re renewed listeners. Um, you can get us, RSTN Roundtable, wherever you find your podcasts. We're there, okay? So we're not going to go through a whole shopping list. So wherever... Wherever you get your podcast, we're there. Yoshi, what do you, just just whatever the rough, but you can talk for 10 minutes for all I care. But <laughs> you're involved with this stuff, okay? Um, you know, Mordecai has to make a living, and he works hard, but 
and you have to make a living too, but you're, you're in there in the trenches helping me with this stuff. So what do you see? I mean, I don't care what you say and how you say it, but what do you see happening in, with these new additions and, and the, the openings this might be in, or the confusion? Maybe we're doing, maybe we're doing too much stuff. Maybe getting rid of the Hebrew was 20 years in the making. Maybe, maybe a lot of people um, didn't want to pick up the RST and E because they, they felt rightly or wrongly that it was too choppy. What do you think? What what I understand, shalom, what I, what I understand is that what I what I came to understand is that not everybody learn at the same pace. And this I had to learn by teaching because I teach English, and it kind of it surprised me at first. But let, let uh, talking about the scripture, when I got into the faith, it was difficult for me to understand the differences between Christianity and our faith because the only Bibles I had available were. The Christian Bible from you know the evangelical church that my father used to attend. So I understand that uh, we have this differentiation in levels, and I believe and I received some of these complaints that you you brought up before about oh the RST and E is difficult because I don't understand. Um, it's difficult because I don't know what Maim is. I don't know what uh, Chai is, and I need to go back and keep looking. To me. This was never a problem. You know what's I, funny? Uh, One second. You know what's funny? Hold your thought. You know, somebody says, I don't know because you're saying, I don't know what this is. I don't know. What this. Let's say somebody said, I don't know what Dom is, right? D-A-H-M. So I had a bad thought while you were talking. I said, well, let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Dom is. It's your blood. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And it's, it's kind of difficult because I've never been an empathetic person. You know, I, I've always been like I had this soldier like mentality. I don't know. I don't I don't care what it takes. I'm going to learn. And this is just me. But I'm, I'm, I'm understanding that other people are slower. Other people are faster than I am. So I believe this change in levels is going to help to reach more people. But the people that are already into this, they need to understand that the simpler version is not an excuse to go back to the old ways. They oh, need that's to a good keep point. They, they need to keep learning and, oh, it's simple. I'm just going to go back to, no, you cannot retard your growth process. You need to go forward instead of going back. I believe that the simple version is not the go-to to people that are already into it because this is a reaching tool that this is what I believe. Now, that's a good point. You see what he's saying, Mordechai? In other words, you Mordechai, so... What do you think? See, what he's saying, and I, that's a very, very important point. And the, the point is that if you've been using the RST and E for 10 years, or you know enough Hebrew like Shalom, Mayim, um, Halakha, that you know a little Hebrew because you've studied, you've taken a course, that we're doing the simple version to replace the Devar Yahua. So the Devar Yahua is out of print. It was King James, Masoretic. I'm no longer interested in promoting the lies of the scribes. So I, I, I felt well, in my Ruach. I still had 20. One second. I still had 20 copies here. So I closed them out to get rid of them. Okay. I gave them away, basically. The Devar Yahua was using erroneous base texts. And I'd rather not make money than then dispense that when we have the the best of the best in the RST &E. So just so you know, the simple English is replacing the Devar Yahuwah. But getting back to what Yoshi was saying, if you have if you've been at level two where you know enough Hebrew you don't have to stop studying every 30 seconds, don't go back. Go ahead, Mordechai. That's a very good point. Yeah. What do you think? Well, to me, it was not a stumbling block at all. It was actually exciting that I would be reading the actual language that uh, the scriptures was written on. And to me, it was really not enough Hebrew words. I wanted to to know that awakened a, a thirst of me to learn more Hebrew. Like, oh, I wonder what this word is in Hebrew. And and a lot of those Hebrew words are key words. So if you research the word. Uh, and the text and and the verse those those Hebrew uh, uh, texts I mean those Hebrew words are keywords you know uh, a lot of them not all of them but you need to know the Hebrew like for example uh, 
Well, we were talking the other day about Milta. In the beginning was a Milta. And then when you go to the Greek, in the beginning was a, uh, the, the word, okay, let's go to the Greek. Okay, it's nomos. Okay, what's nomos? Well, nomos doesn't necessarily mean. Logos. Lo uh, logos. Logos. Oh, it's not nomos? No, no. The, 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 the word, in the beginning was the word logos. Logos, yeah. Logos. logos. Nomos, nomos is the Torah, the law, but, but logos. Uh-huh. Okay, so when you go and research you're that, you're close. Yeah, you're gonna find out that it's, it it doesn't not really address the the law of Moses or the law of Yahuwah. So no, it, it's exciting. The Hebrew words put more. <laughs> I I want to learn if if I see something that I don't know. Okay, good. I got I have to research. Scripture says to study. We must study. So yep. I wish more people had your law. I wish I wish more people had your attitude because because there are two types of people over the years. There are people like you, Mordechai, who says, I don't care. I'm here to learn. So if I can study the word and, and then learn basic Hebrew so I can prepare for the kingdom, that's fine. I'm not going to complain. Matter of fact, I want more. But the funny thing is, as you and I may have discussed in the past, the, and go, back in the Miami days, the... The complaints about too much Hebrew are from the Jews or the house of Judah. The house of Israel or the house of Ephraim, right, which I assume you're from, which is an assumption. You might have some Judite as well. Uh, you guys want more. And so the, the average attitude over the years has been, Shaliach, can you put in more Hebrew? Your attitude, which is the you know, which is I don't know if there's a correct one, but it's a it's a hungry you know, like I'm hungry to learn, right? But unfortunately, I think the attitude is actually changing. I think the attitude today, because of cell phones, devices, tablets, quick. If I can't learn in five minutes, if I can't drink through a straw, I'm not drinking. Okay. If I have to go to the refrigerator and get ice or get a glass, I'm not going to drink. But if you give it to me in a bottle and I can just pop the bottle and it's got so convenience quick, I think because of the spirit of the age. And I'm not just saying it, that's a bad thing. It's just the spirit of the age. People want something that's easy to use. You know, the truth, Mordecai, is I was going to call it the, um, the Torah for Dummies edition or the rst &E for Dummies. But that would be insulting because you ever see those books like a golf for dummies or computer or like tennis for dummies, right? It's like a little black and yellow book. You see it in all the stores. I said, no, no, no. I don't need to offend people while I'm trying to reach them. So if you have the unchurched, you have the, those who don't know the difference between, um, between the Virgin Mary and um, Shabbat and people that are really starting, this is for them. It's simple, but but your attitude is, I think, the attitude of really hungry people. It's like, yeah, it may be choppy at first, but this is what I want. But it, it doesn't matter. By having all these offers, we're, we're meeting the wide spectrum. And what Yoshi said is also important because, you know, once you're in college, you know, you don't want to go back to kindergarten to watch the kindergartners you know, make the poopy in their pants, okay? Because if you're in kindergarten, everybody's making poo poo, so nobody gets offended. But you're not going to graduate college and go to sit in the kindergarten because the smell's going to bother you more than as if you were <laughs> if you were one of the students in the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So where we are today, guys, and you can chip in on this, if, you know, where we are today is where we need to be. We have level one level two, level three, and then level four was the throne of Yahushua. And we're not there yet. That's like confirming four. You yeah. wanted to chip in, Mordecai? Yeah, yeah. I wanted to say yeah. something. That some people may may think, oh, why why do you guys have levels? Why are you trying to include, let's say, quote, unquote, lazy people? But we, as Shalev was saying, we, we need to understand the, gen the generations we are dealing with. And I am a young person from the 90s and my generation, if it's uh, longer than 30 seconds, they don't want to watch it. If it's, you know, longer than a minute, it's a huge video, it, like audio messages. If it's more than five minutes, they don't listen. So we cannot ignore the reality of things, but 
having the mind that I have, uh, you know, I had to start with the choppy glossary looking at every five minutes version. And it didn't bother me, but I love languages. I love studying them. And I lo the little Hebrew that I know is basic. I think it's less than basic, but it came from the words that were in the RSTN. And I don't think, to me, I don't think it is a problem. And with this Aramaic restorations is even more exciting because I get to understand more about the, the reality of the purest version we have currently with the manuscripts that are available to us. But I also understand that some people, they just want to, okay, give me the simple part. I, I want the simple part. I just want to be saved for now. And we need to understand that part. As or how about, really, how about the person who's working four jobs? Yeah. That's, okay. that's, that's, that's Not that everybody's a Mordechai. And by the way, you know, there's a guy in scripture named Mordechai. Okay, and we know him as Mordechai in the book of Esther, right? Yes, yep. But, but in, he has another name. And this goes right in line with who Mordechai, uh, leader Mordechai actually is. He was known as Belashon. If you look in the book of Ezra, Mordechai was returning with the exiles from Babylon. And he was known as Belashon, which means profound in the study of Lashonot, or hmm. languages, or speaking and this guy Mordecai is saying he's I want more Hebrew so that that's that's the name the guy who is in scripture that you're named after is a guy who was hungering and thirsting to learn more languages because he was also called Belashon. Mm -hmm. So go ahead Joe. Right. Yeah you're next we got you we got you more we got the yeah here. I was uh uh that that you said and uh, Yosh is saying we'll come back to you Yosh we'll come back not too long ago yeah yeah, not, not too long ago, I was uh, telling somebody that we're living in an age that everything is fast. You got fast food, fast cars, fast women, fast everything. You know, so every everybody wants everything fast. Even right now, I don't know if this is relative, but, uh, you know, I have pigeons. So I'm doing a crossbreed that it takes long, long time. I've been working on it for 15 years, and now I'm getting very good results. And so people want to buy those pigeons from me. And I say, well, no, this, I, I'm not selling this now. I'm going to sell this next year. And I explain to them how to do it. Uh, okay. They don't want to do it because it takes time. It takes three different breeds to put them together. It's, it's a long story. But that's the that generally is, is for everything. The same for martial arts. Everybody wants to learn MMA. Nobody wants to learn a traditional system basics fundamentals little by little you know it takes like the bible says long suffering without that you don't you don't really get the uh, root you know you need you 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 need the uh, root you know you need to be planted good and 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 that's what i think you're getting with the restoration so you're saying you're saying, the R you're saying you're saying the rst and he helped you not only mature as a nasavim israelite but that it taught you that real to study to show yourself approved doesn't happen overnight. Oh no, oh no! I've been this. Uh, uh, I met you two thousand six. But the the point is the Hebrew slowed you down. No, and you were able to learn. Oh, the Hebrew, able well, of course, because you got to stop and you got to get away. Right, and you what I'm say. saying. Yes, it's a good thing. But it's a good thing. It is because you have a, a better understanding. Right. It is. So, so, but what I'm saying is if somebody says there's too much Hebrew, okay, fine. Now you have the simple English edition, which is replacing the Devar Yahuwah, which was Masoretic and King James based. The truth is, can we be on? I'm going to be honest with you. The truth is, the Devar Yahuwah was not my in intention. Um, I was working with another gentleman who came up with the version and he couldn't. Um, produce it. He didn't have the money, so he asked me to distribute it. So I invested in it, and I became the distributor. That's how we started with the Devar Yehoah. It was never my intention to promote that. And so just recently, I said, look, I had enough, okay? I'm getting people from Remnant House. They're good people, good, good, solid people. They're, they're doctrinally sound. They're, they're forbearing. They're just good people. And we're getting more and more people from Remnant House. And they, and they said to me, listen, you know, you guys would be doing... Um, a lot more distribution of the RST &E if our folks can just ease in. And so I said, sure. And that was the key that Yahuwah used 
for me to put a stop to the Dabar Yehua. But getting to what you were saying, Mordechai, being a master of languages, if, like Mordechai in scripture, it's the he if if the Hebrew, if if you want to get into level two and you don't understand Hebrew, okay, instead of looking at it as a negative, it can be a positive because like you were saying and like I were saying, it slows you down. Okay, I gotta look this up. And then okay, so I gotta look at what's wrong in this fast paced age, like Yoshi was saying. What's the problem slowing down? Isn't that the best way to learn? But I, I'm a just I'm a cra I'm a crazy guy though. Go ahead, go ahead, Mordecai. No, because see, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, it, it does not really slow you down. Let me let me explain. Uh, when I first came to the faith, I came to a pastor, Christian pastor. He's been in the faith already thirty years. An imposter. He knew a lot. Yeah. You, well, you say <laughs> pastor or an imposter? Yeah, he knew a lot. Within within six months of me being uh, in, in uh, B'nai Yeshua Synagogue in Miami, I was already, uh, I mean, I was filled with the Ruach. I was already telling him stuff like, uh, well, the, the New Testament or the, the Renewed Covenant was not cut with the church, but if you go to Jeremiah 31, 31, I mean, things like that, that he... He still think that is the church. So <laughs> it, it, 30 years, I was six months in the restoration of scriptures. And I could see already that he didn't know what he was talking about. Let me let you're a humble guy. Let me rephrase it. I'm for sorry, you. but you're, you're, you're you, you, you using the restoration scriptures, true name edition. You're a humble guy. So I'll, I'll boast for you. Okay. Using the Restoration Scriptures True Name Edition, you knew more than ninety percent of the imposters. I mean, yes. imposters that you ran into using the Restoration Scriptures. It's a cookie cutter doctrine. They all say the same thing for the most part, and they're repeating, repeating, and and it's and the same. Some of the blasphemies, you know, and and they don't realize it's like the blind leading the blind. They don't realize that they, they think it's the truth, but not right. until you come to the original manuscripts, to, to oh, what we're doing, to what right. we're reading from the Hebrew, to right. research, that it really right. starts making sense. You know, and I'm glad you're saying I'm glad yeah. you're saying what we're doing because it's a team effort. Okay. I couldn't do it without Yoshi helping me, honestly. Not at my age. I used to be able to sit longer. Okay. And I and you've been out there promoting it and publishing it. And putting the word out there, whether people buy it or not, you're putting the word out there. So we, that, I'm glad you used the word we. And and, I, and I want our listeners to understand to the RSTE roundtable, new episodes every week. So yeah, make sure you don't miss any of our podcast. You need to understand this is a life changing scripture that takes you back to the pen. You're not listening. It takes you back to the pen of the apostles. There's not a single translation under heaven, as Yahuwah lives, hmm. that has taken the time to pull out teeth to try to take you back to the pen of the apostles. Now, why would any disciple not want to do that? We've done the work for you. And so what? Even if you spend $40, $50, $60, hours, who cares? What price tag can you put on going back to the pen of the apostles and skipping over King Jimmy? Bloody Mary, Tyndale, Cloverdale, the Messianic, the Pharisees, the Brood of Vipers, the, the B'nai Gehenna. What price tag? We've done that for you, okay? We didn't have that, all right? When we got saved uh, 40 years ago, we didn't have that. We didn't have any of those things. Go ahead, Morda. Yeah, well, I know I was going to say real quick because I know Yoshi wanted to say something. Uh, when I say we... Meaning that we are all on one accord. We're yep. all seeking the same thing. Yep. You know, uh, uh, the restoration of what the lion pen of the scribes have done. So I say it's like we are all on one accord seeking the same thing. Exacto. And let me point something out. It's very interesting. When Jeremiah 8.8 8 was written, there was no Catholics. I want you to think about this. And Jeremiah my 8, 8 was, was written as an admonition from Yahuwah. There were no Catholics. There were no popes. There were no cardinals. There was no one to blame but ourselves. 
So the question is, when they came back from Babylon, Jeremiah predicted 70 years, 70 years came to pass, and now he's rebuking the pen of the scribes. Here's the question, who's he rebuking? Even the Masorites did not exist in those days. The school of Ezra, my friend, the one Ezra who told Ephraim, go home, they said, wait a second, we serve Yahuwah, we want, it. We want you to teach us Torah. Ezra said, you're not Jewish? Get out of here. You're our type of Jews. Um, then they had women who had converted from being Moabites and being Ammonites to the one true living Eloha. And Ezra said, divorce them. But yeah, but but she used to be a Moabite. She used to be, she used to be a, a member of Sanballat's group, the Arabs surrounding Jerusalem, and now she made conversion to Yahuwah and wants to keep the Shabbat and keep the Torah. And Ezra said, "I don't care. Get rid of your strange wives." Being a Torah legalist, they were no longer strange. They were Israel. He said, "No, they're not Israel. They're still strange because they're not my kind of of Jews." Okay, I have the authority, and the school of Ezra was established. And listen, guys, the school of Ezra established every synagogue in the land of Israel. Yeah. All the stuff that was going on. Yahweh never said, leave the temple. The temple was still standing. He left the temple. He said, oh, you, how many miles are you? Ten miles? Too far. How many miles are you? Five miles? Oh, you don't have to obey the Torah and go to Jerusalem to worship. We'll build you a synagogue in Tiberias. We'll build you a synagogue in uh, in, in um, Ramatayim. We'll build you a synagogue in Jaffa. And I and my school, my translators, the school of Ezra, are going to control the synagogues, just like we controlled what the people heard when I translated the Aramaic um, the 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 uh, when I translated the Paleo Hebrew into Aramaic block letters, and I told you what it said, just like the Catholics, uh, you didn't understand Hebrew coming back from Babylon. So just like the Catholic Church, uh, you don't have to understand. I'll tell you what it says. That Ezra, that Ezra is not only not a saint; he was the father of the modern Masorites. Don't you ever forget that because Jeremiah was rebuking somebody. Who was re who was he rebuking? There were no Masorites. There were no. He was rebuking the, the Ezra monopoly and the XIV translators. Yosh, yeah. I'm sorry. You, uh, yeah, two where points. Where you left off or anywhere you want to pick up? <clears throat> yeah, two points. One of them is offensive. I don't really care. <laughs> uh, uh, basically, what I what I like about the RSTNE, and I believe this has a lot to do with you. Um, and you know I'm, I'm I'm the same way, but people were people had a lot of excuses, and this go back this goes back to the first and second episodes when we touched about uh, we touched upon uh, comfort zone and why people have this uh, this fear of changing because they don't want to leave their tradition and oh this is comfortable I'm 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 here in my ballpark I don't want to leave it now we don't now you guys don't have any excuses because we have the simplest possible version without the, the wrong redactions and heresies and whatever and i like this because it gives no more space it gives no more room for excuses and so i feel i feel like yeah we shouldn't open up uh you know comfort for people to stop learning and you know but i also understand the reality of things so yes it's not my my ideal scenario to to put out a simpler version because i i don't like it i, I prefer challenging uh, i prefer challenging situations and being challenged in order to grow but this is me the whole world is not the way i am so we need to understand the generation right but that's and, why we're here on yeah the table because we wanted to be challenged we wanted to get away from error and that didn't begin with the Catholic Church and didn't begin with the Jesuits. It began, it didn't even begin with the Mesorites. People don't understand this. Those who follow this ministry understand it. It began with the school of Ezra. If you want to pin the tail on the donkey, make sure it's the right donkey. Yeah. Okay. And we said, so, but the three of us don't mind being challenged, even if we had to learn Aramaic. Because we we love being challenged, like you said. So even if we had to learn Aramaic, guess what? We don't care. But 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 on the other hand, on the other hand, think of the person, and I and I say this in full honor and respect because they they have, they deserve more honor than I do, to be honest with you, because I wouldn't do it. Think about the person who works four jobs to support their family. They need the simple 
translation. They, and we they cannot deny have, their reality. They don't have time to sit there and look up the Aramaic. So it's for them. And and today, in today's world, a lot of people are working two or three jobs just to make ends meet. So the the simple English is perfect for them. Perfect. Yep. And the second point that uh, is offensive when you're talking about Ezra, it's funny that our people, the Semitic people, the the descendants of ever, of uh, we went through. I'm not I'm not gonna put myself in their shoes, but our forefathers went through holocausts, the one in Eastern Europe, the one in Babylon, the one in Assyria. But our leaders were doing exception of people before. If you're not Jewish, if your mom is not Jewish, you're not a person. So it's ironic that we went we had to go through the own our own venom that we were putting out there. And we see this in the Hemia 8. We see that in the book of Ezra. If you're, if you and your wife are not Jewish, I don't care. Go home. Go back to your stupid mountain up north. And yep. you're not part of us. Yep. So it's ironic that we have, yep. uh, we, we have this mentality. Oh, poor people. They went through the Holocaust in the 40s. Yes, it was a terrible thing. But some of us, not a lot of us, but mainly the leaders. And it's ironic that Yahusha always addressed the leaders because the people were open. But the, the, the leaders of the Jewish people, they had this tendency of separating. That's why they are Pharisees, Prushim, separatists. Separated. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to bring this up, not to offend, because I, I, I believe I am from the house of Judah because of my ancestry and the things that I can't bring up. But how stubborn can we be to keep, uh, you know, testing ourselves and testing Yahuwah's patience to keep using this type of script? We know they who, We know who they were. We know the changes that they did. We know that there is a restoration that's supposed to happen according to Acts 3.21 and Zechariah 14. But we keep going back to the same vomit that these lying scribes produced. And then we have the chutzpah to say, no, I'm comfortable here. You are supposed to be challenged. You are supposed to change. This faith is not supposed to be comfortable. And the RST will challenge you big time. A lot. But <laughs> if you are like stubborn enough to, okay, Okay, you don't want to add or make fine, but at least get the simple version. Simple. Don't, don't stay with the King James because he messed it up big time. Don't yeah. stay with the Masoretes because you have to unlearn a lot of stuff. If you guys stay yeah. with the translations, even the Sefer, even the uh, the Hallelujah scriptures. We'll get to that in a second. By the way, they were stolen. The Hallelujah scriptures were stolen from the South African scriptures. They had lawsuits. They had ugly, ugly, ugly fighting on the internet. It got very nasty, and there were lawsuits. Okay, and the and the guy who did the Hallelujah scriptures passed away at a very early age. I don't know was it Yahweh's judgment, was it just illness? I don't know. It's not that's not for me to say. But I'm saying to you, there are bigger problems with all the Hebraic script because they're they're not willing to do what, what we're willing to do. But 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 getting back to that, you said the word Pharisees. Okay. What made them Pharisees? You said it, it means separatists. Okay. Well, what were they separating themselves from? Ah, they thought they were separating themselves from the goyim, the nations. But Yahweh never said separate from the nations. He said, go reach the nations and bring them in. He said, live separately. He didn't say separate yourself and don't reach them. He said, go to the nations and make them Israel. So yeah. when, when they said we are separatists, you know what they were really saying? We're separating from truth. Because if, if we can control the people, if we can make decisions, matter of fact, here's the school of Ezra. I want you guys, I want all our listeners to listen real good. Here's the essence of the school of Ezra. It says in the Talmud, okay, which is the oral Torah, which Ezra promoted and those following him in the centuries before Yahusha, Yehuda Hanasi, others, other key figures. They said, if, a, if, if it's called the, the doctrine, listen carefully. It's called, because it'll serve you well, all my listeners on the podcast. It's called the, the doctrine of the kol ha'am. That means the voice of the people. The doctrine of the voice of the people. And it goes like this. If there are two voices, if the, this is the rabbinic school of Ezra, before the Catholics, before these are the people who had a major injection and input in your Bibles. Even the Hebrew versions, who don't change anything except the names 
the sacred names, the sacred names. They don't change anything else but the sacred names. Here was, here's what you got. If there's a voice from heaven who speaks and says one thing, and there's a voice, the collective voice of the leaders of the Jewish people. Notice I didn't say Israel, the Jews. So if the collective leaders of Israel, of the Jews, say one thing, and the voice from heaven says something else, we must disregard the voice from heaven, and the voice of the people always prevails. Let me say that again. The voice of the people prevails even if you have to disregard the voice of heaven. And that's exactly what they did. Because they tell people, oh, in the intertestamental period, even the Jews say this, after Malachi, before the Christian Jesus and the Christian God was born, Jesus, there was no prophetic voice. It went silent. They, they teach this. They say after Malachi, he heaven went silent. Okay, so why? Why would they do that? So that the voice of the nation is now in charge. And you know who the leader of the voice of the nation was? Ezra and the school of Ezra. That's ironic because it looks a lot well, like... You're enjoying your Bibles and, and save your $60. You know, you'll be $60 richer, but you'll be spiritually bankrupt. And you'll be an offspring of the school of Ezra. And that's not a good thing. We used to think that was a good thing, but that's not a good thing. Go ahead. That's a lot. That sounds a lot like the unholy father of the Catholic Church. If the unholy father says it is right, then it is. Yoshi, let me, it, let, me, let me bring it home even more. Yahuwah says this from heaven. He says this from heaven. He says from heaven, right? Yeah. You have a nice wife, right? Mm -hmm. you love your wife, I hope. You should. I he'll, do. Use, he'll use me to bring you together. <laughs> so Aliyah says one thing, but you love her so much that when the two voices collide, you're going to, the voice of Aaliyah will supersede the voice. You will make your decisions based on her voice. That's exactly what, that's exactly what everybody who doesn't grasp what we're saying. You have chosen the voice of the nation, and the voice of the nation says, don't accept Yahusha, don't accept the New Testament. We have the original Hebrew. No, you don't. Nobody has the original Hebrew. What, how many things are the voice of the nation saying that are direct contradiction of the voice from heaven that gave the living oracle? Okay, the voice of the nation says Isaiah 53 is Israel dying for Israel. The voice from heaven says no, Isaiah 53 is my son, Yehusha HaMashiach, dying for the transgressions of Israel. So which voice are we going to believe? And when you're using these Bibles and you don't listen to what we're telling you, okay, it's not about making money. You want a free version? Go online. It's free. Yahweh convicted me of that too. Too many people lying about us. Go ahead. Not only that, I took away the copy and paste block. You can copy the whole thing if you want. Just copy it right. A lot of people put stuff up on the website and they tell you it's free, but you can't copy it. I said, go ahead. You can copy and paste the whole thing if you want to take 20 years to do that. It was not about money, and it was never about money. It was exactly what Yoshi said, getting in the face of the Pharisees. They're, they're not supposed to be separatists. They're supposed to be evangelists, reaching the nation with the one true name and the one true truth, once for all delivered to the saints. They declared themselves separatists, and Yahushua said, because of that, you're children of hell. When Yahuwah talked about being kadosh, he meant in the way you live Monday through Friday. Not in how big the wall you build to keep, to keep the Moabites and the Ammonites away. I, I keep them away. You live for me. But in the meantime, you be a light to the world. See what I'm saying? So, so here we are today. We have all these options. There's breaking news. And that's wonderful. Anything else before we go on to another topic? Because I think you had a couple more things you wanted to say, either one of you. No, to me, that, that was it. Yeah. Mordechai? Yeah. No, that was it. Mordechai, anything we want to share? No? No. Okay, but no, it's, I mean, uh, it's a small. Yeah, but it's, go ahead. Yeah, is it another it's a small topic. It's about Tyndale. Yeah, so we'll, 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 we'll leave this part behind. Um, and we just want everybody to understand that we've done our homework on the school of Ezra. He's telling people to get divorced who are equally yoked. 
He's telling the Ephraimites to go home, that he doesn't care if they want to build the temple and rebuild Jerusalem. So, And then he builds his school to build synagogues, which were illegal. I want you to understand this. Yahuwah required every male to appear in Deuteronomy 16 and many other places on his appointed times. And Ezra said, uh, well, if you, if you live more than four or five miles, you could. And what am I going to do in that synagogue? I'll control. I'll control the book. I'll control the language. I'll control the speech. I'll control the name. It's not going to be Yahoo anymore. It's going to be Hashem. Okay, all this stuff started with Ezra. Stop blaming the Catholic Church for stuff that you know nothing about. Okay, now let's switch to another topic. Mordecai, what did you want to bring up? Go right ahead, please. Um, yeah, about Tyndale. I, I yeah. come up uh, come up on something here, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, okay. Tyndale's, biblical, Tyndale's biblical text is credited with being the first Anglophone biblical translation to work directly from Hebrew and Greek text, although it relied heavily upon the Latin Vulgate and Luther's German New Testament. It says it comes from the Hebrew. Right. I just wanted to ask you if you can share on that. Okay. So you have the three three or four culprits in this chain of command, right? You have Tyndale, then you have uh, then you have Cloverdale, um, and um, who's the other fellow? Wycliffe. So Wycliffe. It, okay, it all started with Wycliffe. But when you do the research, one borrows from the other. When they say it came from the Hebrew, says who? If these people could if these people had to use German and Latin. They couldn't, they did not, they were not proficient in Hebrew. Okay. I can get somebody, I can get somebody from Brazil to put together a pamphlet in Hebrew, copy and paste from here, copy and paste from here. And I can produce a pamphlet from a Brazilian uh, in Hebrew. Now, is it going to be good? No. Is it going to be reliable? No, that, that don't mean nothing. I speak Spanish. I can't get my conjugations right. Yo hablo español, pero muchas palabras no tienen mi la la no 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 yo no yo no sé es es presente es futura no do I speak Spanish well enough to get by you know in my I'm not saying they didn't speak anything but they were certainly not proficient you know that's the difference but in order to justify oh thank god we have an english bible oh thank god we have so they 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 glorify they they give these people sainthood in any way the just hebrew like that they had ezra. just like we do to ezra did ezra speak hebrew okay but his his agenda was nefarious right so as jews as jews we give ezra sainthood and as Christians who are so happy to have an English Bible, we give Tyndale and Wycliffe. But if you study the history, you really dig deeper, they had to borrow each other's material. So the first dude who was um, who was Wycliffe, okay, he had to borrow from Jerome, an anti-Semite, and Luther, a Jew, a, a Jew killer, who who hated Jews and had an agenda. Then this guy had to borrow. Then, then, then um, Tyndale had to borrow from Wycliffe. Then Cloverdale, Wycliffe didn't finish because he was martyred. So Cloverdale had to finish. Well, who was Cloverdale? Well, he was a, a minister in King James' cabinet. <laughs> he was not a scholar. He was an influential guy who had the, the power and the money to finish the fragmented work. These are all fragments. None of those guys translated an entire scripture. The last in scripture that I understand was translated from Genesis to Revelation was by the apostles. How about that? Mm. Even the, the Hebrew Dead Sea Scrolls, bro. Bro, even the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's not a full book. Do you realize we don't have a full Genesis? We don't have a full Deuteronomy? The only full manuscript that was not borrowed from somebody was when Yahusha told them what to write. Think about that. When they put the Aramaic Peshitta together in the first century, first was they wrote the Birch HaDashah for the first time, and then they translated the Aramaic Peshitta from a manuscript or from Yahusha's own lips. Yahusha could have sat there just like he did on Mount Sinai and given them word for word what to write. Okay, The apostles were scribes. 
He said, I send scribes. And there's not a person here that does that's listening to our 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 podcast who uses other translations. Okay, they are not availing themselves of the living Yahusha dictating to his apostles. I am saying to you, we have the writings of the apostles. And if there were errors, wasn't Yahusha there to say, no, I didn't say that to Jeremiah. This is what I said. No, I didn't say this to Ezekiel. This is what I said. Come on now, guys. And we're still using the Masoretic text and the Textus Receptus. Go ahead, Yosh. Yeah, uh, I was just going to say in, upon this point that Mordechai brought up is that uh, um, Tyndale and Cloverdale's version comes from the Hebrew. The same Hebrew that the Masoretes produced. That's the oldest Hebrew available. So even if they spoke like intermediate level Hebrew, it was the Masoretic Hebrew. It was not the, the Garden of Eden Hebrew because it basically disappeared after the sequester, after our people were sequestered from Babylon. So. Thank you. They were using, they were using the official text of the Yahusha haters, the Yahusha deniers, the ones who had taken Yahu out 134 times, put vowel pointing under everything to change the meaning, put letters in the alphabet that don't exist like E. Everybody talks about, there's no J in Hebrew. Duh. And guess what else there's not in Hebrew? Eh. Okay? Eh is only when you go to the doctor and he, put, and he checks your tongue. Okay? So exactly what you're saying. Exactly. What, even if Cloverdale and Tyndale, even if they... Sp even if they understood perfect Hebrew, like they want you to think they did, right? What Hebrew did they understand perfectly? The one that had been doctored what? Starting with the school of Ezra before Mashiach was born. They're using doctored Hebrew, okay? So if, I'm, if I assume that a medicine is good for my cholesterol, but it's in fact... A, a strychnine pill. It's a, sp a pill of strychnine. And, I, and I'm perfect. I know the strychnine. I know the pill. I know the pharmacy. But it's poison or cyanide. Is it going to help me or is it going to kill me? Even though I know the pill, I know where the pharmacy is. I know who manufactured the pill. But I believe it's good medicine, but in fact, it's strychnine. What is going to be the result? My, my, I'm going to be dead, right? So exactly what you were saying. Even if they even if they spoke better Hebrew than the Masoretic, would it help them? If those translators spoke better Hebrew than the Masoretic, would it help them? No, because the, the foundation of the Masoretic Assembly of Ezra text is bankrupt. Do you understand they deny the son and the father? They they denied that Yahoo has a son by changing references, okay? And they denied the father by taking out his name. So what do you have left? You got some Hebrew mumbo jumbo. You got a Hebrew crossword puzzle. And if you dig long enough, you go, oh, this talks about God. How nice. Oh, it talks about God. But so does the Quran. Yep. And let's say Ezra was not a denier of Moshiach. He was an anti-Semite because he was denying half of the people of Israel anyway. He so we cannot rely on that, dude. Exactly. Exactly. And who is Israel? Israel is anybody who wants to labor with us, work with us, and be a chad with us. We don't get to say wrong side of the tracks, wrong skin color. Who are we? Anybody who wants to be Israel is be becomes Israel, but not according to Ezra. But, but you guys are hitting on a lot of important points. They say, well, how do we know the Masoretic is corrupted? The Masoretes in the, in the index recorded all the changes they made. So all we have to do is to go to those changes and reverse it. And let's start with 6,000 times using the name of Yahuwah. Okay? If you went into a store and you bought a, a book and it said, say, before I spend $40 on this book or this set of books, wh what's the name of the author so I know for, in case anybody asks me? Well, we don't know. Okay, you look in the book. Can't find the name of the author. You look at the cover, can't find the. Are you buying it? I'm not. I'm not spending $1 if I don't know who the author is. Why would anybody buy a Bible when they don't know who the author is? Lord? What Lord? Snake Lord? Circus Lord? Land Lord? You know, Whorehouse Lord? Every, every Whorehouse has a Lord. 
There's a mama sitting in the front. It hooks you up. Hello? But we go beyond restoring the name. We're restoring the, all the stuff, and it finally hit us. And you guys have heard me say this over the past few weeks. Oh, we can say Elohim, and we can say Elohim, but don't say Aloha. Why? That spirit of fear comes on us, because we could be saying Allah. Bingo, because that's the only name that's not an Elohim. And when you say Aloha, we're talking about Yahuwah Aloha, who is Echad, not three persons, and the unholy trinity invented by religion. It singles the true Yahuwah to being a single being with different manifestations. But don't say that name because you're probably saying Allah. No, there are other scriptures in Daniel 9, 7 that says that the curse is Allah. So it's, it's spelled differently, it's said differently, it's used differently, but it has to be closed so Satan could prevent us from using it. The same Satan that took out Yahuwah's name, it's the same Satan that is preventing us from using Aloha and keeps us stuck on Elohim because Satan is one of the Elohim. So when you're calling on Elohim, you could be calling on Satan. So he put that spirit of fear into us. My family has it too. I, I, I'm struggling here, trying to get them because they say, uh, "I'm sorry, but it, it sounds it sounds so close to Allah. I'd rather not say it." And Satan's going, <laughs> Satan's in the corner going, <clears throat> "Go ahead. Anything else, guys? You want to bring up? We're going to go a little over time because we're only doing one episode today." Morty, Yoshi, anything before we get into another topic? Okay, no. we're all experts. Cool, but I mean, we gotta. We 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 we. This is a struggle. This is spiritual warfare. So let's 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 just throw this out there, and we're running out of time. So hopefully, we answered that. We're not impressed with the original Hebrew because there is none. We're not impressed impressed with the preserved Hebrew because, by the way, Mezrite means preserved, right? It means the traditional text. We're not impressed with that. I am impressed with why Yahusha would call the apostles scribes. I am impressed with why Yahusha would call the apostles doctors, therapeuti, or the Greek word therapist. Now you got my attention. And so one of these truths that has been hidden from us, uh, brethren, is that the apostles were scribes. And in essence, the struggle for truth is not a struggle. Listen carefully. Everybody, all our people who are tuned into our podcast. And there are hundreds. Our struggle is not against Christians or Jews or Judaism. Our struggle is, is between what scribe will you believe? Like, you know, Isaiah 53, 1, whose report will you believe? What scribe will you believe? Okay, Mordechai, I got you. A few more minutes. Okay, so we can maybe pick this up. So it's a what, there, we're, there are there are scribes. Some are sent from Ezra, and some were sent from Yehusha. Yehusha said in Matthew twenty three, he said, "You guys are B'nai Gehenna. You guys are sons of hell." He says, "You guys encompass land and sea with your writings." He says, but you're pretenders. Hypocrites means pretenders, actors. He says, behold, the wisdom of Yahuwah says, I send them scribes. And what do you do to the scribes I send you? Like, like you chase a dog from city to city. You hound them and you, you, you follow them to destroy them. He says, I'm sending you scribes. He's saying, I never saw that till last couple of weeks ago. He says, I'm sending you scribes to fix the problem. I am Yahuwah Elohim. Yahuwah Aloha, I have come to fix the problem. And what do you do with the people that I sent to fix the problem? You hunt them down and you chase them like you're going deer hunting to kill them. Okay, if that's the way you react to the scribes that I have sent to fix the problem, the blood of all the righteous prophets, from the foundation from righteous Abel to Zechariah, slain between the temple and the altar, will be upon your hand. I will require it not of those generations, but all the blood throughout humanity I want to require of this generation. Because not only you're rejecting me, you're rejecting the scribes of the Restoration Scriptures. 
The restoration scriptures is what we have through Yahusha. It's not Moshe Konachowski. It's not the RST and E roundtable. The restoration scriptures is why Yahusha trained these scribes. Any thoughts, brother, before we wind up? No, that's it for me. Mordechai? No, that's it. We're all experts in one hour? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> And we hit upon the very very important points, a lot of a lot for the people to think about. Yeah. Uh, I mean I'd like to give him another ten minutes of stuff to think about, but our brother informed me he has an appointment. Yeah. You have a Moed, Mordechai. You have a Moed outside the camp, huh? <laughs> it's for health reasons, so a secular Moed, yeah. Yeah. Well I think I think we can what do you think, Yoshi? We let him go or let him go. Let, let him fix his back. Don't keep him in any. In, don't 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 keep him any longer. No, he's got to teach his karate classes, so he needs to be healthy. Oh, and fit that, for that, it. Yeah, no, that that's not until five. Yeah, the karate. So we'll is, we'll the appointment is now. Yeah, no problem. But we uh we, we're gonna we're gonna let everybody go at the same time. Um, but y'all willing? Y'all willing? The, the good master willing will be back with another episode. Of the RST, and, and we really didn't get into it. I want to pick up on that a little bit more, and I want you guys to think about that. It's not a battle of religion like Satan wants to make it, where we hate each other, we don't like each other. It's it's everybody has these scribes, and what scribes are we listening to? The Jews are listening to one group of scribes. The Christians are are, are listening to the same group of scribes plus an additional uh, demonic group of scribes. When the scribes were sent by Yahushua, if we can just find the scribes sent by Yahushua to fix and give us, not the original Hebrew, granted, but the restoration scriptures. And we're not talking about the RSTNE. We're talking about what did he tell those disciples to put down on paper? Man, I've, I've never seen that. I know that he sent prophets. I know that he sent Moses. I know that he sent evangelists. I knew all that. But it, there it was in black and white. Behold, I, Yahushua, the first and the last, the Aleph and the Tav, the Rishon and the Acharon, behold, I send you scribes. And you know, why, you know why you don't have the writings of those scribes? Because you don't want to. You were too busy chasing them, trying to kill them. Yep. This is crazy stuff, man. This is insane. It's been right there in black and white. Mm -hmm. All right, my friends. It's been another wonderful, wonderful round table. The table's still round. And um, if the table's still around next week, that means we'll be back with you guys. So shalom, everybody. Shalom, yo. Shalom. It's shalom. been a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, man. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you for joining us. Shalom, shalom. Okay. All right. Hi there! Welcome to the RSTNE Roundtable Podcast, a discussion that focuses in the gold standard of the Word of Yahuwah. Here are your three hosts, Sholiak Moshe, Leader Yoshiyahu, and Leader Mordecai.